Hello, I'm David Ellenstein, Artistic Director at North Coast Repertory Theater. Thank you for joining us today for Theater Conversations. If you enjoy watching these, please click like, subscribe, and share. It's free to do, and it helps us get more visibility for these videos. Thank you. Hello, and thank you for joining us today on Theater Conversations. It's my great pleasure to be joined by my friend, the wonderful actor, Louis Latorto. Hello, Louis. Hello, David. Or as Hello. I like to say, hi, big brother. And why do you say hi, big brother? Well, uh, many audiences might remember me playing your younger brother in chapter two a few years ago on North Coast stage. Right. And uh, you know, it's funny because I, I had a relationship with you before that play, but ever since that play, all I can think of you now is my, as my big brother. And, and it's funny, I always say sometimes you do a show where things in the show carry over for the rest of your life, people that you interact with, the relation. And so every time we see each other or write to each other, it's, hey, big bro, hey, little bro. That's I mean, right. that's how we talk to each other now. Because now I love you, that. Not that you weren't already part of my theater family when we did this show, but now you're really part of my family because you're my little bro. <laughs> and I love that. Because I love we it have too. a rapport that we wouldn't have had otherwise without that intimacy of that relationship we had during the show. Right. And, and that doesn't always happen, but when it does happen, it's great and it's special. And, and I'm so glad that you and I have that. Yeah, so just you. to refresh um, the North Coast Rep audience uh, sure. about where they may have seen you on our stage before, because you don't always look the same. That's I believe the first thing you did at North Coast was you played um, Felix That's in right. God's Couple. That's right. And that was by sheer accident. Yeah. I mean, luckily, because I know Chris, who is brilliant, and I love him, and we've had a chance to work together a couple of times now, but I know Christopher that- Christopher Williams you're talking about. Yes, Christopher Williams. Yeah. I know he was originally slated as playing Felix, but fortuitously for me, he got uh, a better paying gig, I joke, but he was working on a film, I think. Correct. And he had to go do some more shooting on that. I don't know if he was in it or as a producer of a film he was working on, but- Like a little bit of both, as yeah. It, as it turned out, that left, uh, exactly who did the prodding, but my name came up, uh, whether it was you or Andy or both of you, and then I got the call and I was like, heck yeah, I would love to come down and play Felix. Felix, Felix Unger. Because my father, uh, who gave me the bug at a very early age, he was a community, the well, he's, he's stopped acting and I wish he would get back into it, but he was a community theater actor for most of his life alongside his nine to five job. Um, I don't know how my mother put up with that schedule, but I think he was trying to escape the, uh, the parental responsibilities. <laughs> so anytime he had a chance to leave the house, he would go to a play. Uh, but uh, one of his famous uh, roles that I got to see him do as a kid and rehearse and help him memorize lines, and I must have seen every rehearsal and uh, just about every performance of his, he played Felix and, back and in the he, 70s. And didn't he Seattle. come and see didn't he come and see you do it here? And he did. You know, my parents are very much uh, huge supporters of the theater and huge supporters of me. And uh, God bless them. They, they have traveled all around the country to come see me in plays. And uh, it was really special for my dad, especially to see me do The Odd Couple since he had done it. And he had also taken me uh, as a kid in Seattle where I grew up. He had taken me to a stage production of The Odd Couple with Tony Randall and Jack Klugman after the series ended, they toured the country with right. the play, the Neil Simon play, and I got to meet them. And so The Odd Couple has been a very fond uh, piece of nostalgia and memorabilia for me and my dad for many, many years. Oh, so it was a great full circle for him to come see me do it. So um, you also did, and I'm gonna get these out of order. We, we mentioned chapter two, which was another Neil Simon. Yes. And then there was laughter on the 23rd floor, which yes. was another Neil Simon. Well, the right? funny thing is who knew I would be, do I had never done Neil Simon ever before The Odd Couple. And just between you and me, you know, uh, many people may know that it was kind of a dirty word around professional theaters for many, many years, Neil Simon, because- It was successful successful commercial but for, for I think he also got a bad rep because a lot of community theaters 
would do Neil Simon to bring in audience members. And many times they weren't the best realized productions. And so um, I think Neil Simon got a bad reputation uh, because they were bad productions of his work. And he was and so, so over overproduced. Yes. And yeah. so when professional productions pick it up, you realize, oh my God, no, that he, he is brilliant. He was, he's one of our most brilliant playwrights. Um, so you were, you, I just want to get, uh, get all the stuff out there that sure. you've actually done here. Then we can so, talk about everything. Back, back there was, couple, chapter two, right. uh, Laughter on the 23rd Floor. Those are the three Neil Simons. Then we had Sherlock that, Holmes and the Adventure of the Great Gnome Gold Rush, in which you played several characters, I believe. Yes, yes. Very, very quick changes. <laughs> and running, running outside from left to stage, left to stage, right and back. Mackenzie's in the Dexter. <laughs> <laughs> and then that's an inside uh, joke <laughs> that's right uh then uh, we had um gosh what else A uh amadeus amadeus in which you played the emperor joseph ii where you continually said too many notes just too and many what, notes. Was, what was the other line you had rep repeated ah, there it is there it there is, it is. <laughs> which you did wonderfully well thank you yeah, and is, then, that it? Uh, is it those five or was there another one? Am I forgetting? Well, there's the last one we just did. I know the pandemic has made us all confused, but you know, we did uh, a little play called The Outsider. Of course, of course. And, and uh, but played... there was one, there was one more and I'm trying to remember what it was now. It escapes me now. How can we forget a play that you were in? I, I, I think I'm, it's age. It's age, it's old age? age setting in, old age. Uh, the memory starts going. Well, it's funny because uh, we have some pictures from shows up on our, our walls in the cafe and in the hallway and up in the office. Right. And you look pretty different in all the different plays that you were in. I mean, I look at you as Felix, and then I look at you from the Sherlock Holmes play, and then I look at you from The Outsider, and you, you if you didn't know, you wouldn't necessarily think that that was the same actor. And uh, that's something I admi always admire in actors. Well, I, I take that as a huge compliment, especially coming from you. You know, it's something I've always wanted to uh, intentionally emulate. I mean, I think my favorite actors in the world are uh, people like Gary Oldman, who, you know, they're so transformational. You can't see them uh, underneath their uh, you know, their vocal delivery and their makeup and their costume, they're, they're so transformational, they become an actual different person. I, mean, I remember seeing, uh, oh gosh, what was that movie where Gary Oldman played the, uh, the Rastafarian drug dealer with the... Uh, I didn't see it. <laughs> oh, uh, uh, Christian Slater, Roseanne Arquette was in it. I mean, Patricia Arquette. I, it, was the, it was in the 80s. But okay. It, it took me literally about 25 minutes of watching him before I went, oh my God, that's Gary Oldman. No way. So, you know, those kinds of actors really excite me. They, the ones that really just completely transform and are chameleon-like. I've always right. admired those kinds of actors. Right. So um, just so the audience know, knows a little bit more about you because they get to see you do your, your work, but they don't know about you. You were born in Seattle? Is that Born right? Born in Seattle, yes. And how'd you yep. get the bug to do theater? Well, you said you know, your dad did it, but... My, my dad, you know, I, since my dad was, uh, had dipped his foot quite deeply in the, uh, the waters of community theater up there, he was always around uh, theater people, not just community theater actors, but he rubbed shoulders and had a lot of professional actor friends in Seattle, people who you might have known, like Clayton Corzat, Right. Susan Corzat, Ted Darms. Right, I mean, right. these were big names in the Seattle theater scene in the 70s. Yep. And uh, he also had a very loving, uh, a lovely relationship, friendship with a guy named Ralph Rosenbaum, who also uh, gave me the bug. He was a great mentor and teacher and director of children's theater. Now, he was a UW music professor, but he and my dad hit it off. Uh, when my father and mother moved to Seattle from San Francisco in the early 60s. And um, he was one of the first guys that my dad found to kind of mentor him as a father figure because he was alone in a new city. And they became fast friends. And on the side of his music professorship, he loved doing theater and directing theater in the Seattle area. And he and my father started a children's theater um, 
in Bellevue, which is a suburb of Seattle, and was very successful for about 10 to 13 years. And That's they great. used, yeah. And, it, you know, it was the type of children's, you know, there's children's theater where you go, oh, okay. But then there was children's theater that's performed by adults. And these were adults that were professional actors in Seattle doing children's theater. So it had a higher uh, a quality bar than some of the children's theater you might think of or people might think of off the bat. And so it was what were the very first well plays, produced. What were the first plays you did that like uh, made you go, I'm going to do this? Well, I'll tell you, before I got onto the stage, my father, who again, loved the theater. I mean, just to give you a little background of him very briefly, he had an opportunity to tour with Life with Father when he was a kid. His mom, my grandmother, took him to an audition against my grandfather's wishes. And it was a huge national search for some redheaded kids. So my, my grandmother had his hair dyed red and he went and auditioned for George Abbott, the yeah. George Abbott, and he got cast. And he was gonna do a, a national tour of Life with Father. But my grandfather said, no, no son of mine is going to do that. Wow. So I think he was quite disappointed by that. He got the bug early on. And I think a part of him really felt like, hmm, I wonder if I had done that and followed that path, what, you know, what would have happened? So uh, in a way he kind of lives vicariously through what I do because I think it's what he really wanted to do if he was right. asked. Now, his path took him a different way and he loves his life and there's no regret. But, you know, he did have that sparkle and he did have that bug and I just wonder what would have happened, you know? At yeah, the... well, but he gets, as you say, he gets to live vicariously through you. True, true. Yeah. So, um, but I got off, you... I got on a tangent. What was the major? Uh... Oh, well, I just, I just wondered what were the first couple of plays oh, you did oh, that's that right. you excited about doing this for your life? So, so he introduced me to the theater early on. He took me to theater when I was like six, seven years old. And I remember these incredible, even in my childhood mind, I could discern what was good and what was not good. And he took me to some like high quality shows. I'll never forget. There was this theater in Seattle in the time, at the time in the seventies called the Bathhouse Theater. Right. And this guy by the name of Michael Brill, very, very theatrical, old school, you know, dramatic actor, wore a cape and, and walked with a cane. He directed this very expressionistic, stylistic James Thurber fairy tale adapted for a play called uh, The Thirteen Clocks. And the staging in it was so uh, theatrical and expressionistic, it really sparked a child's imagination. And I saw a few things like that. And again, they were all acted by adults that were working professionally at night in you know, main stage theaters in Seattle. So it was, the quality was really good. And I thought, wow, um, this is really something. And it, and it lit my imagination. I was a very quiet kid, very, very shy, painfully so, introverted, uh, hard to get out of myself. So this was a way for me to kind of have my eyes open and my imagination utilized and I wanted to be a part of that. And, uh, you know, I remember being around theater people, my parents would entertain at the house with their actor friends or after rehearsals or cast parties, you know, my house would be filled with all these, you know, bigger than life personalities. And I remember having, you know, you know introduce myself early on and then go to bed, but I would sneak out of my bedroom and like, listen at the top of the stairs down in the living room to all these like, you know, wonderful, fanciful, entertaining stories that these, you know, bigger than life personality types would share. It was, it was, uh, it was attractive to me. Yeah. Yeah. So similarly with me, as you know, I grew up in that too. So you, you went to school and you, did you do it at college? I, uh, I did it in high school. I did a couple of community theater productions in Dallas when we moved there uh, with my father, actually. That was a lot of fun acting with my father on stage and shows. Yeah, yeah. Um, I actually stayed in Seattle in, in the early 70s. My father was transferred in his nine to five job to Texas. And uh, I was cast in a show in the fall at that time. And they were in a big move. And my father actually came to me it was very progressive of him. I was only 12, 12 and a half. 
he knew how much I loved acting. And it was a dinner theater production I was cast in of A Thousand Clowns. And I was cast as the only kid, Nick. Right. I'm sure you know that show. Sure. And, uh, <laughs> and I wanted to stay. I, he came to me and he thought, you know, this is going to be hard. Do you want to you want to come with us to Texas and uh, move with us, or do you want to stay here, finish out your eighth grade, and do the play? It's like I didn't care about finishing my eighth grade; I wanted to do the play. Right. So the director and his wife actually opened their doors to me. They barely knew me, and I stayed in their house and completed my eighth grade in Seattle, and was able to be in this production oh. of Thousand Clowns, and it was a wonderful production. And I just fell in love. That's really where I really fell in love with theater. Yeah, good. So talk about how you and I met. I mean, because you and I actually met. I we met in an elevator, didn't we? At the Mark Spencer Hotel. Isn't that the first meeting? That's the kind of... first time? Uh, I... Now, that, that I don't remember. You're remembering more than I. I'm remembering um, meeting you at the theater. Portland Repertory Theater. Portland Repertory Theater back in- and You I were think. doing, I, I, I believe was doing you were doing Unseen. Unseen. And you yeah. were in Which rehearsal saw. for- for uh, a view from the bridge uh, view from the bridge with our friend frank carrado directed yes. by jeffrey sherman or yes. another friend of ours god, god and bless um, soul. i thought you were like a kid because you have <laughs> always looked young because i know you're actually 93. Uh, well i am, you've always, you've I, am. Looked... I, I i use a good moisturizer <laughs> <laughs> but you actually, you, you are quite a bit younger than me, but not as much as I thought at the time, because you were playing Rodolfo, who's supposed to be 19 or something like that. Right. And I was, at that time, I was about 30, 32, 33. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But yeah, I fortunately, thank, thank God to my parents and for good genes, fortunately, because they look really young, my parents. Yeah. Uh, fortunately for an actor, that's, a, that's an asset. It so, is. Uh, but we I got to know each other, I mean, briefly then. Oh, that very our, briefly. Very I briefly. Remember, I don't, I don't even did. think we hung, hung out that much. We just, I mean, in passing and in introductions, and I saw your work, and I was really impressed with you. I think I said something to you uh, as a fan after the show, uh, walking to the bar one night, but we didn't really have a big connection. No, no. We were we were working on different shows. Yeah. And I was on my way out, and you were on your way in. Yes. So, but so, that, that, that's uh, why I was shocked when uh, you called about Odd Couple, because I was like, wow, David really has a really good memory. Or... Well, you came highly recommended. I mean, Andy Barnacle, our friend Andy Barnacle, who ran Laguna Playhouse forever, is a Love big him. fan of yours. Barbara Beckley, who runs The Colony, was a big fan of yours. I remembered liking you and thinking you were a good actor. Um, Had you seen, did you see View from the Bridge? I, th I saw a rehearsal. I don't even think I saw the whole thing. I think I maybe saw the first act rehearsal. Uh, it was so, Frank was so good. He was amazing. Yeah. We miss Frank. Frank is now living in New Hampshire. Oh, and, wow. Uh, yeah. We miss Frank. But yeah. Frank's doing fine. Frank's good. Frank and Mary. Uh, so what do, you, what do you think? I mean, so here we are shut down. Uh, we, can't, we can't do live theater because of the pandemic that's still going on. And we don't know how long that's gonna go on. Yep. What are your thoughts? What are you thinking? How do you keep positive? How do you stay um, ready, available, excited, and not just fall in the doldrums? I mean, and probably sometimes you fall in the doldrums because I find each oh, yeah. day is different for me. Oh yeah. What, what, what do you do? What are you thinking about? What are you, what's keeping you um, afloat and looking forward? Well, that's a really good question. It's really hard not to slide into the uh, negative and the depressing thought of, you know, what is, is this going to last another year, another two years? What's going to happen to a lot of the smaller theaters who can't sustain themselves financially through this storm? I know you're in good shape, and I know some other theaters are in good shape, but a uh, majority of them aren't. Um, and what's going to happen to the whole industry? I mean, I, I've, I've pivoted a little bit. I just taught a, uh, and, and helped direct a, a Zoom production of Macbeth. But you know, there's so many limitations to that medium. And right now I just think it's like a Band-Aid on a gunshot wound. We're trying to like think it's normal and see it all as, you know, yeah, this is theater, but it's, it's, just, it's just not the same. It's not the same, but and, yeah. So, so how do you keep going? I mean, how, what makes you not just get all the way depressed? Well, that's or, or maybe, <laughs> hey, I haven't talked to you before this conversation. Maybe you are. Maybe you have a big bottle of scotch sitting off the computer there. I don't know. 
<laughs> well, I do. No, uh, you know, it, I, I, I have to like, my girlfriend and I are both, uh, you know, somewhat empaths. And, uh, you know, we, we are emotional sponges and we just have to turn off the news and turn off the social media. That's a big one. Um, yeah. There's just so much uh, swirling negativity out there and such crazy times that I find myself getting wound up and, you know, stressed out and tense by the end of the day. So we just try to take news fasts regularly. Uh, that's number one. I try to yeah. read a lot of plays. I thought, well, yeah. this is a good opportunity to, you know, read so a lot you, of plays. What have, you read that, what have you read that's really good that surprised you in the last month? Um, Nothing. It's all bad. Well, no, I mean, I, I'm actually been revisiting some Shakespeare plays. There's a reading yeah. group I belong to, and we just finished Pericles and yeah. um, Othello. And I was like, wow. It, you know, Pericles isn't done that much. Right. Uh, and I, can, I know why, but I've been in two productions of it, and it's a really beautiful play. And there's some beautiful passages that would just tear your heart out. I mean, so there's those. Uh, I really like uh, Martin McDonough. I haven't seen enough of his plays, but I really like The Pillow Man. Uh huh. I know it's one of his, well, all his plays are kind of dark, but uh, there's something about that that's really interesting uh, to me. Yeah. Um, Do you have any bucket list roles? Oh gosh, there's a lot of them. I, I knew you were gonna ask me this question. I, I wrote a few down. <laughs> oh, okay. You knew, how did you know I was gonna ask you? We didn't- Well, I, you know, I have been watching the series for quite uh, a while. And you know, I'm starting to repeat myself. Is that what you're saying? <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, a, it's, you know, it's, a, it's an easy common question. Of course you're gonna ask that. Uh, you know, in the Shakespeare's, I would love to, I would love to do a Henry V. Yeah. Or the Dauphin. Maybe I'm a little long in the tooth for that, but uh, if the stage is, far enough away from the audience, I might ah. be pull it off. The King of France uh, is a great part too. That's to true. Dad. I, I would love to play Saturninus in- uh, Titus. Titus. Such I played a fun Bassianus. role. I played your, your brother, I would have played your younger brother in that one. Where, yeah. where, where'd you do that? Uh, great Lakes. Oh, great Lakes nice. Shakespeare. Nice. It was called Great Lakes Shakespeare. Now it's Great Lakes Theater Festival. Uh, I'd love to do one of the witches in the Scottish play. Ooh. That's a fun idea. You know, I was cast as the Thane a few years no, ago. I'm thinking you do look a little like Hecate. <laughs> <laughs> Who's usually cut. Many yeah. audience members might not know who Hecate is. Who is Hecate? You want to tell us? Well, she's the... Uh, she's, she's head witch, the, right? Yeah. In the hierarchy of evil, she's kind of on top. <laughs> right, under, right under Lucifer. <laughs> uh, I, I would love to play Iago. Yeah. Great you know, role. I think I think Iago. You know, he's so he can be played like a villain, but you know, with as with all villains, you got to play them honestly. And I think the more you can play him like a loyal friend, then the betrayal is even deeper. Right. So right. I think we have to believe in the guy is a good guy. Yeah, I, I'm with you 100 percent on that one. Uh, love to play Angelo in Measure. Yep. Uh, Hamlet, of course, although I'm probably a little too long in the tooth for Hamlet, but I Who think there's that? Hamlet I don't, in I don't, I don't know that play. <laughs> <laughs> You've done Hamlet, haven't you? A few times. I Seven bet. productions. Seven? Seven. Directed really? two and in five. Wow. You've done as You've many Hamlets. four and almost been in five, I should say. I was in a cast in Zeffirelli's Hamlet, which never actually happened. Really? Yeah. Wow. Who were I you played, cast as? I was cast as Barnardo and the second grave digger. Nice. Richard Gere was cast as Hamlet. Wow. Now you know why it never happened. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't say that. He probably would have been great. But it just, it didn't happen for a lot of reasons. It was going to be at the end. Oh, that's too bad. Yeah. You might, you might have been a big movie star and not running North Coast Rep at this point if, if things had worked out. Wait a minute. I'm not? <laughs> I thought I was a big movie star. That's why I'm doing these conversations. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that's my short list of, of, of Shakespeare's. I'd love to do a couple of David Ives plays, uh, The Liar, which I think is- Good play. So Funny good. Play. It's, yeah. you know what? I saw the premiere of it in DC when I was working there 10 years ago doing uh, uh, Henry V and Richard II in rep for Michael Kahn. And uh, they premiered The Liar that season. I saw the first uh, shows and the funniest 
play I have laughed at since the eighties when I saw the original production of Noises Off. I mean, it was yeah. that funny. Yeah. It's a funny and it's all in rhyming couplets. I mean, he's like a, a new Richard Wilbur. He's that clever yeah. with, his, with his rhyme schemes. Right. Amazing. Right. Venus and Fur, that's another David Ives play I'd love to do. Yeah. Yeah. And then uh, anything by Fado or Pirandello. I mean, where do you see those done anymore? Of course, no, theaters can't. Well, most of the Fados are so huge. Right. The Pirandellos are huge, too, uh, and huge and harder for an audience to grasp unless they're into it. I mean, I love the Pirandello plays. I, I do, too. I, one of my favorite experiences as a kid was seeing Tonight We Improvise, uh, the Pirandello play that my dad directed. Oh, wow. Uh, and uh, the Company of Angels in 1964. Wow. I was, I think I was, I, well, I was seven years old and it was thrill. I loved it. It was yeah. so good. So, yep. yeah, I, I hear you. Th those plays are, have fallen out of uh, production just because they're so expensive and big. Yeah. But there's so many great ones. Yeah. So many, I mean, how about the O'Neill plays? I mean, oh. nobody does them anymore because they're just large casts. Right. I mean, they're great plays. Did you ever do a long day's journey? I did with Jonathan McMurtry and Rosina Reynolds. Wow. And Brendan Ford. Do you know Brendan? The name is familiar, but I don't. He lives in LA. He's a really good actor. He played Laertes the last time I played Hamlet. Okay. Um, he played Jamie and then uh, Sean Cox played um, Edmund. Who did you play? No, I directed it. Oh, you directed it? I thought you were. I directed uh, it. No, no. Yeah. Yeah. In fact, I did it in San Diego, 2001. Wow. Yeah. So. Was that the only O'Neill you've directed? Uh, uh, I did Moon for the Misbegotten as well. Of course. I directed that one. So anyway, have you done any O'Neill? You know, I have not. In college, uh, my professor at the time, Dan Cawthon, he uh, got the O'Neill Foundation out in, because uh, I went to college at St. Mary's, which is in the Bay Area. And the Dow House in Danville, California, O'Neill's house, where he wrote Long Day's Journey, Right. Um, there was a foundation there and they collaborated uh, with the college that I was going to, St. Mary's. And there was a commission of his C plays. Yeah. And I participated in those. So it was an evening of one acts yeah. and they were produced at our college with grant from the foundation. But that's, what, that's the only really material I've worked on. What's the movie they made of the C plays, the one act C plays, John Wayne starred in it. It's based on the O'Neill C plays. Yes. Oh, if you don't know, and now yeah. I'm going to have, I can't remember the name of it. Long I Voyage don't. Home. I think it's called Long Voyage Home. Uh, yeah. Go on the internet and look it up. John Wayne is the star of the movie, but it's wow. based on the O'Neill short C plays. Wow. That yeah. sounds and really he wrote as a young man. Huh. They're the first plays he wrote when he was living in the flop house. I'll have to go check those out. Yeah. Yeah. What a, what a writer. Oh my God. Oh my gosh. Amazing. I and Arthur Miller. I mean, Arthur Miller is probably my favorite American play, right? Do you have a favorite Arthur Miller play? I love View from the Bridge because I was in it uh, yeah. and it was really powerful. You know, yeah. when you work on something, you get a little closer to it. Uh, right. But all, all my sons, I mean, I, yeah. I'll never forget a production. When I was in Ashland working at the festival yeah. in the late 80s, uh, I saw a brilliant production. Do you know the actor Richard Elmore? Yes. Yeah. What what my favorite actor next to Rex Raybould when I was in Ashland. Yeah. Dick Elmore killed as the father. I mean, he just broke your heart. Yeah. And it was, was a powerful was, production. Was Dee Maskey the mother? I believe she was. But she came and did Marjorie Prime for us. That's a few right. Years ago, and I yeah, knew her. Wonderful. I knew her from Arizona Theater Company in the seventies. Oh my God. Yeah, I know. Crazy. Yeah, she's amazing. Hey, Lewis, it's great yeah. to talk to you. It's great to see you. I want to see you in person. Always great to see you too, big brother. I'd even wear a you. mask and stay six <laughs> feet away from you. And yeah. I hope this uh, pandang pandemic ends soon and we can uh, get back to work in a, in a real room together. Well, we will. Soon. Whenever we're able, we will. All right. Thank you so much for inviting me on this. It's been a pleasure, David. It's so great to talk to you. Even you, this you way. It's not, North it doesn't take the place of the real thing, but at least it's something, right? Well, yes. North Coast and you have always treated me like family, and uh, I really appreciate it. It's nice to you're have my, artistic home. You're my little bro. All right, big bro. Take care. Love you. Bye-bye.